Hello everyone, this video is going to talk about a simple shadow graph setup uh, that we're using with a combustion system, but you can use it for any, anything you need to use a shadow graph for. So what we have is a simple burner flame, it's just a water cooled. Once a burner flame with coal is the, is the orange particles burning that you can see. So main shadow graph we have a point source of light here, which is, this is an old projector with a perforated plate or a pinhole over the light source. Uh, that is at the focal length of one uh, biconvex lens. So we have a biconvex lens mounted in the side of the combustion chamber. So in between, that biconvex lens is going to generate parallel light that's going to run through the test section. And then the second biconvex lens here, uh, you actually don't have to use a second biconvex lens, but uh, we're using a second one here to uh, condense the light down and bring it into a macro lens on a, on a DSLR. This is a recording video. This is a, a D90. So you want to open the macro lens all the way up out to its infinity focus. And then when we turn a light on, so we can turn our point source on there. You can see it quite bright. That's why we have this shroud, just so we don't go blind whenever we see it. Then you can see the shadow of the, uh, the flame here. Now you might say, well, why do we need to do this? Well, if you look at the flame, flame here, you can you can take a picture of it and look at the flame edge like it is. But if we turn on a good amount of coal, now we can't see where the premix bit of the flame edge is. But if we look back on our uh, shadow graph, we can see the flame edge rather nicely here um, without the washing out of the orange particles. So the shadow graph system is uh, relatively simple. We only have three main components. Uh, point source of light, lenses, and then something to capture it on. We did use uh, these screens, either tracing paper or a gray extruded plastic. Uh, you can see the shadow graph on these screens, but it's much more difficult to capture it and your intensity is much lower. Uh, if you don't use this second biconvex lens, then your image is the size of the uh, the parallel column of light so the intensity is much less it's much harder to capture and you can only capture part of it inside of the camera because this camera only has a 28 millimeter I believe it's 28 millimeters by something millimeter lens uh, so it, you can't capture the whole area so when you have a tall flame you can't get it all on the camera image um, this light tends to overheat you can use a, a bright LED uh, we've ordered one but it hasn't come in yet And I'm trying to think if I wanted to mention anything else about the shadow graph at this current time. So it's fairly simple. Point source of light. The larger this pinhole is in your light source, the more fuzzy your image is on the back side. So to get that as small as possible is good. This light overheats uh, quickly, so it's important to have a cooling fan uh, running and you have to use a rather thick steel plate, otherwise the, if you use aluminum it'll melt through. Uh, combustion chamber walls, you have to clean them periodically, otherwise you can even see, I was running a test today, so you can see uh, char building up in the shadow there, so when char gets either on the lens or on the glass, you'll get a, a black bits on your, on your outputting image. It is important to get the camera aligned appropriately. Often I will include a um, a the, one of these little uh, hot shoe mounting levels so that way I can get it level in two directions. So you can see if I'm off by just a little bit I will lose uh, the image washes out and doesn't work so good. So um, I do have it set up here nicely it looks like it's fairly easy to do uh, one thing for ease of use later i've done a couple of things i built this which is a basically a mount for where to put the point source so uh, if you move the point source you will line up the bottom of this with these lines and the edge of the apparatus here and that'll tell you where to put the point source back to have it in the right place 
to get the shadow graph to work. And I also built a little mount uh, that goes here. I don't want to put it in because the cover is not on the camera. But you mount this here and then it tells you where to put the camera lens uh, so that you'll get the right image. Uh, so that your camera will be in approximately the right place. It still needs some fine tuning once you line it up with this little housing. I also built um, this little contraption here to put inside, run the shadow graph on to make sure that there's no distortion. If the image is distorted, um, you'll get the, the shadow won't be parallel and you have these dotted lines or these holes in it so that you can see how tall the image is that you're getting because originally I was getting a very small image when I wasn't using the second biconvex lens. If you only use a, a planar convex lens you get a spherical distortion I think that's what it's called um, where the center gets a bulge and the edges of the image get stretched. Um, shadow graph, shadow graph, shadow graph. I believe that's all that I want to say. These are inexpensive uh, glass biconvex lenses where if you're, if you're trying to take an image very far away so the light is parallel uh, at this first lens, this first lens here, so it's parallel as it comes across. But as you get farther away, the colors will separate out. Um, so your image will get skewed if you're very far away. They sell more expensive lenses that will, will fix that. But we're using such a small test section here that it's not such a problem. So I hope you find this useful and have a good day.